Hi, my name is Sarah Goth. I'm a PGY2 Oncology Pharmacy resident at UW Health. So oncology pharmacists um, are really in charge of the medication list and are a really big resource for physicians, other providers, nurses, and patients. Um, I think our, our roles really evolved from more of kind of that medication use um, process and drug preparation to more of a clinical resource. Um, so we work really closely with the physician disease-oriented teams um, to try to figure out where new drugs will fit into therapy and to draft treatment plans and supportive care plans and things like that. Um, and so when there are questions, the physicians come to us all the time kind of figuring out what's the best drug to use, well, how would things need to be adjusted based on lab values and toxicities. Um, and then we're a huge resource for patient education as well. We do a lot of follow-up about adherence and supportive care, especially with patients getting active chemotherapy. And so that's by phone and clinic. Um, when they come to the floor, we do admission histories and discharge counseling for every patient that's admitted to the hospital. Um, and so we really, we really own those medication lists, whether in any kind of phase of care. And so I think our, our role, we still have a, a role in that pr drug preparation and kind of making sure that those processes are safe. Um, but we also have taken a lot more of those clinical responsibilities now. So I really fell in love with oncology during my first Abbey rotation. I did a rotation at um, on B66, which is the inpatient oncology unit at UW Hospital. Uh, you rotate through the hematology, bone marrow transplant, and inpatient oncology services. Uh, and I just, getting to know the patients really well and the very many different things that pharmacists get to do on that floor. Um, I just thought it was a really amazing opportunity. And the more I learn about oncology and all the different things pharmacists are doing in that service line at UW Health, the more I wanted to be a part of it. Um, the people that work in oncology are amazing. The physicians really look to the pharmacists and I really wanted somewhere that I could play an important role. Um, and then also, I think there's a huge role for pharmacists to take on more leadership positions in oncology, since drugs are such an important part of all the care. Um, and so for me, I really wanted, I want to take on a kind of manager or coordinator position in the future. And there are so many roles to take on those additional responsibilities in oncology right now. So the rotations are actually one of my favorite part of the oncology residency because you get to do rotations both inpatient and in clinic. Um, and we also staff in both areas, so you get a lot of experience in kind of different phases of care. Um, so our inpatient rotations are hematology, bone marrow transplant, um, oncology, which is a lot of complications and supportive care for solid tumors, and then palliative care. And then in the clinics, we do basically the major organ systems, so breast and lung, um, gastrointestinal, genital urinary, um, brain cancer, melanoma, um, and then you also get to do some kind of more unique rotations. So I did one with our Pharmaceutical Research Center, which is our investigational drug service. So I got to, actually got to build a research protocol and figure out how the investigational drugs were going to get here and be processed, which was a really cool opportunity. Um, and then some of my other elective rotations, I'm doing a coordinator position, so learning more about pharmacy leadership and oncology. Um, and um, with the Beacon Builders, so Beacon is our how we do our electronic treatment plans. And so it's really important for pharmacists to know kind of how those are built into the electronic medical record. Um, so that was a really interesting experience seeing how that all is kind of built in the background. So our daily activities really vary kind of on where you are, but no matter where you are, you're always in charge of the patient's medication list. So um, if patients are in the hospital, we do admission histories and discharge counseling for every patient, and then we round with the medical team. Uh, we participate in interdisciplinary rounds, working with the social workers um, and our aftercare coordinators to make sure all their medications are covered when they go home. Um, and then we also, in the clinic, do a lot of um, su more supportive care counseling for patients who are receiving chemotherapy and are kind of in and out every few days, um, making sure that things are going well and that we can facilitate refills if they need them. Um, we answer a lot of questions about over-the-counter medications, especially related to constipation, diarrhea, um, and a kind of herbal supplements and vitamins as well. Um, so those are some of the things we do direct for direct patient care. 
Um, a lot of patients receiving oral chemotherapy, we do um, phone callbacks just because they're not coming into the clinic every couple of days to receive their chemotherapy. Um, so talking to them about side effects, new medications they've started, a lot of drug interaction screening and things like that. Um, and then kind of some of the things that we do, not necessarily direct patient care experiences, but that we do on a daily basis on a higher level, um, are just kind of making sure that the service line keeps moving along. So there are a lot of new drugs coming to market and kind of fielding where those go into therapy, whether or not we can get them built into our electronic medical record, whether or not we can even get the drug in stock is sometimes a challenge. Um, so working through those kinds of things, that's something that we work with on a daily basis as well. So the most rewarding part of being an oncology pharmacist is definitely working with the patients. They're amazing and they, a lot of them have lived really otherwise healthy lives and are all of a sudden kind of given this terrible diagnosis. Um, and so they're, they really, uh, really appreciate your help in working through kind of the terrible chemotherapy and all that supportive care. Um, and because the patients are coming, you know, back every few days, every few weeks for the chemotherapy, you really get to know them, um, which is something I really like as well. And it was a big reason I went into oncology is because those relationships are so valuable. Um, I get phone calls and pages from patients who have left with questions that aren't even remotely related to medications just because they know that I'm kind of like a resource for them. Um, and so that is something I, I really, I like I can't really towards to help, but it really means a lot to me to kind of build those relationships and be able to be there for the patients. So one of the biggest challenges in oncology right now is definitely the, the rising cost of drugs, especially for the new ones coming to market. Um, I've had patients have to pay $2,000, $3,000 a month copays. Um, just because they don't have any other options and they don't quite qualify for, you know, foundation assistance and things like that. And that's really hard. I mean, uh, about 20% of patients with cancer will go bankrupt during their treatment. And to me, that's just unacceptable. Um, so we do a lot to try to standardize our care as much as possible. Um, we have our chemotherapy council, which which we're, we get to be a part of as pharmacy residents um, that really looks at the different treatment regimens and makes sure that the outcomes data and the safety data um, looks okay for patients. So it's kind of a peer review of all the, the treatment regimens before the, any physician can give them to a patient. Um, and then we have uh, other committees like our bone marrow transplant variation reduction committee that I'm a part of as well that's really looking at that whole transplant process to make sure it's as standardized and kind of cost effective for the patients as possible. And so we're seeing w there are 832 new drugs in the pipeline right now for being investigated for oncology indications. Um, and 20 to 30 percent of those are going to be oral medications. So there's a huge kind of slew of medications that are going to be coming to market in the next couple of years. Um, and we've seen the price points on those just be really high. Insurances are having a hard time figuring out kind of how to cover those. Um, and patients are, are who don't really have any other options. It's, it's a really tough decision whether or not to, you know, empty your bank accounts for, to fight for those last couple months of lives. And so we struggle with, you know, who should be making those decisions and um, how much information can we give patients and how do we translate that into patient-friendly language and a lot of that. And so that's been a, a huge challenge. Um, so with that, just keeping up with the number of medications coming to market is, a, is another challenge we're facing. Um, we, I'm part of a lot of the professional organizations which really help with that with either emails or conferences and webinars to talk about new medications and kind of where they think that they're going to fit into therapy. Um, but you really have to do a lot of reading. Oncology is definitely one of those fields that you don't want to go into if you don't like change. Because um, we're having just huge changes with you know, what's first line and what's next line and um, what's used for what. So um, that's a huge challenge and being part of professional organizations is a huge help. Um, but you also have to be willing to kind of sign up for those things and read the journals that you get and, and things like that. So for students who are interested in oncology, starting with your, if you're at your API rotations and trying to get some exposure there is a really good idea. 
um, that we do a lot of unique things and sometimes it's not always easy to be up in the oncology unit um, just because the, you get tough patients going through tough things. Um, but those rotations really give you exposure to um, kind of how things are working and the different areas pharmacists get to intervene in, which is, is really cool and it's how I fell in love with oncology. Um, if you're not able to get one of those rotations, I know sometimes it's hard from more of a practical standpoint. We're always, you know, willing to have people come shadow us and um, try to gain some insight that route as well. Um, we have one of the um, only 41 designated N NCI designated cancer centers, so the National Cancer Institute in the entire country, the only one in Wisconsin. Uh, we've also just become one of the um, NCCN, or National Comprehensive Cancer Network, uh, member institutions, only one of 27 in the country. So you guys are right next door to one of the best cancer centers in the country. Take advantage of it. Um, and then I think, too, if, if you're looking for more of a high-level kind of um, exposure, they have uh, an article that was just published in AJHP about the um, evolution of pharmacist roles in oncology, which is pretty interesting. Um, and, you know, going to professional meetings uh, and going to the oncology programming there. I know PSW has programming, um, ASHP, ACCP, all of them will have at least something at their, at their big meetings. So just see if it's something that you, you really like or if it's something that won't put you to sleep. Getting a feel for that early is a good idea. Um, if it is something that you're interested in, I think an, a residency is really important. Um, and I think actually that's probably true for everybody graduating pharmacy school from my perspective. Um, I know it's not easy to sign up for minimal pay for, and for one to two years and more work than you've probably ever done in your life, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, as a resident, you not only get to kind of continue to grow your clinical knowledge, but you get experience with project management, um, you get to attend meetings and be part of committees. Um, so those are some things that, unless you're really motivated, you really don't get exposure to until you're five to ten years in, and even then, not everybody gets those opportunities. Um, and so, uh, you know, we as an oncology resident, you get more, more responsibility, um, you get more time in those kind of specific clinics and um, inpatient units, um, learning about the clinical things, but also, um, you know, helping to build treatment plans and building relationships with physicians. And um, I think my project this year has been a really great experience. I'm working on standardizing our graft versus host disease. Um, and so I've created a committee of nurses and physicians and I've come up against a couple of roadblocks, which most people will know, but, you know, getting the skills to, to overcome those and work with people to kind of work through their concerns and incorporate them into your, um, a, a document that's going to infect an entire institution and a lot of people. Um, those are really important skills moving forward, and I think if we want to continue to advance our practice, not in oncology, but as a pharmacy profession, we're all going to need to have those skills. Um, we are going to need to be able to speak to the value that pharmacists can bring to the table and you know, speak to how we can help manage those rising drug costs. Um, and so um, residency training is invaluable, and I think everybody should seriously consider it. The job outlook for oncology pharmacists right now is, is really good. Well, I think a lot of different health systems and even individual pharmacies and cancer centers are, are realizing the important role that pharmacists can play in oncology um, and helping them to manage the, the rising drug costs, all these new drugs coming to market, um, and helping even with supportive care and things like that when physicians are, are really busy. Um, and so I just kind of a this year, this past spring, when I was looking for a job after residency, there were over 50 different job openings in, for oncology pharmacists across the country in academic medical centers alone. Um, and so there are, I think, with that expansion of pharmacist roles, we're going to see that continue to, to increase. So a big part of the kind of evolution of the oncology pharmacist role, I think, is going to mirror our huge paradigm shift in treatment in oncology. Um, so we're seeing two big things. The first is the advent of immunotherapy, um, which is focused less on kind of that cytotoxic killing of cancer cells and more on rubbing up your own immune system to target those cells. Um, and then also with the advent of molecular tumor boards, 
Um, so helping um, treatment decisions be made more on molecular markers of the tumor and less about where the primary tumor was located. Um, we're seeing drugs used for um, tumors in areas that they've never been used for before just because of their molecular markers. And so that's really cool, but we're also having physicians <laughs> use drugs that they're not terribly familiar with. Um, so having pharmacists to kind of support that and make sure the supportive care options are there, make sure that the drugs are used safely and effectively, um, is going to be a huge role for pharmacists. Um, supportive care as well is evolving as more and more um, literature comes out, as more and more drugs come to market. There have been three new antiemetics approved in the last few years, um, and they're all pretty expensive. And so um, trying to figure out where all of these fit into therapy, um, what should be used first, what should be used if certain things fail. Um, pharmacists can really be leaders in helping to make these treatment decisions on a higher level and then enforcing them on a more patient-specific level. And so um, we're, we can, like I said, be leaders in helping to kind of um, guide this paradigm shift and make sure that the things that we're doing and the way that we're changing is safe and effective. Um, our fundamental role as pharmacists uh, is never going to change, I think. We're going to always want to be those medication experts and the people that physicians and other providers can go to for questions. Um, but I think how we do that and how we communicate information, um, how we help facilitate insurance coverage and other things like that, um, that's going to continue to evolve as reimbursement changes um, and things like that. And so um, I think we're going to have to be even more accountable and responsible for our decisions and as we take on more of those roles. Um, but I think that it's a very exciting time for oncology, um, and I'm really excited to be a part of it.